Before we walk you through the module, do not forget to check the local hardware configuration. Since we will measure the trip times of the overcurrent protection function, the currents in all three phases and the trip signal will be enabled for this test. In essence, the overcurrent module presents the same layout and views that we already know from the other modules. Therefore, we start off with the test view. Since no binary outputs are used in this example, we can jump directly to the trigger tab. Test Universe needs to have a time reference and a trigger condition to do the assessments. The trip time can either be measured from the fault inception to the trip signal or from the start signal to the trip signal. The table in the trip condition section displays all the CMC inputs that are routed in the hardware configuration. Here, you specify which binary inputs are used to measure the trip time. In this example, we will use the fault inception as a reference for measuring the trip signal. It means that the measurement will include the pickup time. The fault tab contains the settings that are necessary for performing the test. The Load Settings section allows you to supply current during the pre-fault time. Depending on the fault type that is simulated during the test, the load current could also be applied in addition to the currents in the fault state. Refer to the manual for more details about fault types. During the post-fault time, the load current is always off. The magnitude of the load current can be specified as an absolute value or as a multiple of the fault current. The phase angle of the load current can be the same as the fault angle or can be specified by the user. Use this decaying DC option to avoid magnitude jumps on the transition from the pre-fault state to the fault state if the load and fault angles have been set to different values. There are two ways to set the maximum time for the test point when no tripping is detected. Absolute and relative. The absolute time is a constant and independent value. The relative time is a percentage of the maximum trip time, which can be obtained from the tripping characteristic and the time tolerances. Test Universe always uses the smaller of these two time values. For the sake of simplicity, no load current will be injected in this example. The absolute maximum time can be set to a reasonable value, let's say 5 seconds. The relative maximum time can be kept to the default value of 100%. In the voltage settings section, you can apply a specific voltage to the faulty phase during the fault state. Since the voltage is essential for determining the fault direction, this option is selected automatically when testing directional relays. For testing non-directional relays, you can clear this box to disable this option. Now that the settings are already entered, it is time to define the test points for the characteristic test. This is done in the second tab called Characteristic Test. First, choose the fault type and enter the magnitude and angle of the fault currents. It is possible to enter the magnitude with absolute values or relative to the pickup current of an element. If the test point is set relative to an overcurrent element, the magnitude will adapt to the changes of the pickup value of the respective overcurrent element in the test object. Note that the angle can also be modified when testing with voltage output. Now, click Add to add the selected test point to the test point list. We strongly recommend that the characteristic is tested by approaching the boundaries of the tolerances. These are the more critical points of the characteristic. This way, a total of four points can be added at 90% and 110% of each pickup value for a phase-to-ground fault. The IT diagram in the Characteristic Test tab displays the resulting combined characteristic curve of all tripping elements that are relevant for the selective fault type. All the test points are also included in the diagram. Check the phaser view to see the currents and voltages that are output on each simulated point and other calculated values like symmetrical components or powers. 
The time signal view shows a calculated signal preview. After the execution of the test point, this preview is replaced by the actual signals. This includes the analog output signals and the states of the binary inputs and outputs for the selected test point. Now, we are ready to run the test and check the results. The overcurrent module will check if the measured time falls within the minimum and maximum times according to the test object's tolerances. When the condition is fulfilled and the test points are assessed as passed, we can see that the green crosses are displayed in the table and in the IT diagram. Finally, we can have a look at the time signal view to check the trip signal for each test point.